Divorce inquiries have gone up. More ex-spouses complaining about being denied access to their children because of the circuit breaker and a rise in inquiries by discontented caregivers on how to be given the sole power to deal with assets and affairs of their elderly dependents. Now, these are some of the common issues encountered by one law firm, which has recently started conducting free weekly legal clinics online in response to the circuit breaker measures. And for more, we're joined by Justin Chan, Senior Partner and Head of Dispute Resolution at Tito Isaac and Company. Thank you very much, Justin, for joining us this evening. So take us through the rising trend of the type of cases that you're seeing? Well, as, as you mentioned just now, um, a divorce inquiries are on the rise. And I think this is due to the enforced 24-7 uh, cohabitation that happens. So at, at any one time, you are one foot away from your spouse or your children. And that, that may bring, bring forward some previously ignored and deep-set issues. Uh, in relation to the ex-spouses being denied access, I think that's that was to a large extent due to the confusion as to what uh, uh, what you could legally leave your residence for, uh, and that has been clarified in uh, recent legislation that says that you are allowed to leave your house in order to take over care and control of your child. Um, in so far as uh, uh, caregivers are concerned, um, during the circuit breaker, it it could be that. Previously, when elderly dependents were on a rotation basis between two households for their care, now they are only un, uh, under the care of one. And the other caregiver has uh, taken some issues with regards um, how that care is being given. So you're seeing quite a significant impact then that COVID-19 and the situation is arising, like the circuit breaker measures, is having quite, a, quite an impact on families then? Um, I, I think it's fair to say that there is definitely an impact, but uh, again, all of this is temporary. I mean, come 1st of June, um, there may be shifts in, in, in what kind of control measures are being implemented. So we, we have to take a wait and see approach. So question is, how have the circuit breaker measures then changed the way lawyers like yourself deal with such cases? It only deals with the delivery system. I mean, um, most things are done uh, with remote remote communications at the moment, but our advice doesn't change. Um, if you are ex-spouse uh, dealing with another ex-spouse, the, the interests of the children remain paramount. If it's caregivers, then that elderly dependent or that dependent's interests are paramount. Our advice actually does not change uh, because of COVID-19. And we do know that there are relief, temporary relief measures at least to cover issues like bankruptcy and insolvency. And what kind of impact have you seen so far on those types of cases? I think it's early days yet. Um, the conversation right now seems to address uh, these astronomical numbers of bankruptcy applications that we saw in March of this year. I think it was 462. But it's critical to note that the relief measures only kicked in on the 20th of April. So we don't. We need some ramp up time for the, those relief measures to kick in. So the we don't have that crystal ball. the The months coming up will be um, will be extremely telling. Justin, we understand that you're doing everything remotely now. So you know, share with us the experience. So how different is it compared to pre COVID nineteen times? And you know, how has the pandemic actually changed how the legal industry now operates? Um, we operate, operate mostly remotely. It's, it's very interesting because uh, remote hearings, um, it's, it's, it's a bit of a change for us because you are no longer physically present before the judge. You are talking through a screen as I am talking to you now. So uh, what it entails is for the judge, I'm hoping it does not um, differ or detract from the strength of our arguments. For the lawyer, it's very interesting because Think of a situation where you can be on your couch 30 seconds after your, your hearing has concluded. It, it, it's a brave new world, and I think we should embrace it. Well, if we can just keep you from your couch a little bit longer, I've got one last question for you. Do you see a change as well in the types of lawsuits that are being pursued by companies during this period? 
Uh, yes, we do. I, I, the inclination seems to have gone from uh, suing to negotiating. Um, previously, where suing was the first part of call, so to speak, uh, now the um, uh, what our job seemed to be is to review the contract, look, look at uh, the force majeure clauses, the non-performance clauses, and can we renegotiate this contract somehow? Business continuity seems to be the key. And uh, that is somewhat in line with what our lawmakers see, uh, are trying to do and making mediation the first part of call for dispute resolution in Singapore. Yeah, that was a good place to start. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us this evening. Keep up the good work. We've been speaking with Justin Chan, senior partner and head of dispute resolution at Tito Isaac and Company.